Alright, what is up YouTube? We are back with part two of how to mix your music and mix your beats. Today we're going to be talking about drums. The previous video we talked about instruments, so be sure to go check that out. Thank you to those who suggested this video. Don't forget to go in these comments and suggest a video that you want me to do. I will be glad to um, tackle it. So yeah, let's hop right into this. I'm going to be showing you all how to mix your drums with your instruments. Alright, so before we get started, you might notice something a little different. This is Ableton 10. This is not Ableton 9. But do not be dismayed. This is the exact same thing as Ableton 9. So everything that I do here, you'll be able to do on Ableton 9. So yeah, let's just hop right into it. Alright, so right here, we have the instruments. Those were the instruments that we mixed in the first video. Um, I'm going to show y'all what kind of drums we have. So the first one's going to be our kick. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just like I showed y'all how to do on the instruments, I'm going to be throwing an EQ on all of these. So yeah, let's double click on kick. Let's go to audio effects. And just like I showed in the other video, there's two different EQs, but they both do the same thing. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. So the kick, we want just the lows to be in it. We don't want it to be talking on the highs because if it's on the highs, then it's going to get muddy up with these open hats and these crackles and the hi hats. So before I do this, I'm going to throw on that limiter. And what the limiter is going to do, it's going to stop the clipping from happening. And we don't like clipping because, I, I mean, I don't think anybody likes clipping. But I want this limiter to be on all of our tracks, so I'm going to hold down control. Drag it right here. And there we go, we have a limiter on all of our tracks. Do we have it on the instruments? No, we don't. So let's do the same thing. Boom. But I actually also want it to be on my master. Because I've, although all of these have limiters on them, and although all of them aren't going to be clipping, the master is still going to be clipping. The master is all of the noise from every single track. If we look down here, and I play these tracks, see that red? Red means clipping. We don't want it clipping. So I'm going to hold down control, drag it to my master. There we go. Now let's watch it again. No clipping. So let's work on this EQ. solo it there we go I want to add a little knob right here and this is gonna cut out all the highs all right I like that but I don't want some of these lows I want to leave some of these lows to the base I like to have my kick to be a little bit more high than my bass, so the kick isn't gonna be battling with the bass. so now let's listen to it and then I've also brought up frequency up a little bit back here so it can be a little bit more punchy. Now, this is a really good tip that I want you all to see. So this is called side chaining. So what's going to happen is whenever this kick is going to be played, I want my instruments to dip down a little bit so the kick feels like it's really punching the other instruments. So I'm going to go on my instruments right here. I'm going to get a, I can either do a compressor or a glue compressor. I'm just going to throw in the glue compressor. I'm going to click on this button right here, press sidechain. I want the instruments to be sidechained from the kick. So I'm going to go over here, click on kick. So now watch this. I'm going to hold down control so I can listen to the instruments and the kick together. All right, so nothing is happening. And that's because I haven't brought down my threshold. So when I bring down my threshold like this, this knob is going to be going up whenever that kick hits, and it's going to bring down the instrument. So let's listen to that. It's a little bit too much. And it's... I want it to be going up and down super quick. So I'm going to bring the attack down, because the attack is making it go slowly up, and I'm going to bring the release down, and the release is making it go slowly down. So let's watch it again. that allows me to maybe bring it down a little bit more. 
All right, it's sounding good so far. The last thing I'm gonna do to this kick is add a saturator, and the saturator is a good thing to add some punch. So let's bring the drive up a little bit and maybe bring that bass up a little bit. Let's give it a listen. All right, it's sounding good. Let's move on to our hi-hat. So the hi-hat is gonna be completely opposite from the kick. I want the hi-hat's EQ to only be the highs. So I'm gonna do the exact opposite of what I did to my kick, and I'm gonna change this knob right here to a low cut, boom, there we go, and I'm gonna bring it up here. Let's solo the hi-hat, let's give this a listen. Let's bring it up maybe a little bit more. And I think it's just a little bit too high, so I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's add some reverb. And a good reverb I like to use for my highs is a, fro uh, is a forest floor. The decay time is going to be what's telling me how long the reverb is. And I don't want, to be, I don't want it to be that long because it's my hi-hat, so I'm going to bring it down. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this right here. There we go. Alright, so now let's solo the hi-hat and the kick together, see what they sound like. Bring that reverb down a little bit. All right, sounding great. So now let's move on to our snare. Here, let's listen to what it sounds like with the instruments. All right, the snare's a little bit too high. So I'm gonna double click on the audio and I'm gonna bring it down three semitones. There we go. There we go. I like that, like that a lot. Um, so now let's EQ this. So for the snare, I'm gonna be taking out highs and lows. So I just want the snare to be on the mids. So right about there, and right about there. Maybe bring this down a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring it up actually in the middle because I really want the snare to be popping right on the mids. There we go. Maybe do the same thing with the kick and add a saturator because I really want this snare to be popping. I'm gonna bring that drive up, but I'm gonna keep the bass low because I don't really wanna be affecting the bass that much. Yeah. See, it makes a big difference. There we go, let's move on to our open hi-hat. So our open hat is basically gonna be the same thing as our hi-hat, so I'm just gonna double click on the hi-hat. I'm gonna grab this EQ, hold down control, and I'm gonna drop it down on my open hat. So as you can see, the EQ is after the limiter. We don't want that. We want everything to be before the limiter. We want the audio to be affected by all the audio effects, and then it's gonna hit the limiter, and the limiter is gonna bring everything down, and it's gonna reduce clipping. So let's drag that EQ before the limiter. There we go. Now, this might be a little bit too high. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let the open hat maybe have a little bit more room. So all mixing is is adding your personal touch to your tracks. So the things that I'm telling y'all, this is just gonna give y'all a baseline of what to do and kind of how I mix my tracks. You don't have to follow exactly what I'm doing. You can add your own spin to things. You can add your own touch to things and that's gonna make your sound different from the next producer. I think that this open hat needs a little bit of chorus. So I'm gonna drag this here. It's a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down, and I'm going to bring the dry wet. The dry wet's going to tell me how effective a certain audio effect is going to be on a sound. So, see, 100% dry wet is just a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to bring it down to 24. And you can barely notice it, but that's what makes your sound different from the next. So I'm actually going to drag the exact same reverb from my hi-hat to my open hat. But again, I'm going to move it. Let's give it a listen. Maybe add that decay time up a little bit. There we go. That's nice. That's sounding nice. So a very specific rule that I follow is I have my limiter at the very end of the order of the audio effects, and I have my EQ to be second to last right before that limiter. If I had my EQ as the first audio track and then I added some chorus, some reverb, some saturator, some compression, then that would mean by the time it hits the limiter, the EQ is going to be totally different from what I wanted my first parameters to do. Because 
reverb can add some highs to your track even after you throw in your EQ. All right, so let's move on to our crackle. And I'm actually gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I have my limiter right here, right? I'm gonna throw in my EQ, okay? And let's say I wanna take out some highs, all right? So let's play this. There we go. All right, so when I first threw on my EQ, I didn't want the track to have any highs. But let's say I throw on a reverb, a saturator, a chorus, an erosion, and another reverb on top of that. Let's see if this track has any highs after the fact that I took out the highs. So let's play it. See that right there? We don't want that. So that's why I throw on my EQ at the end of every track. See? Now the highs aren't there. Alright, so let's listen to this crackle. There we go. Alright, we want the highs to be very obvious on this and we don't want any of those lows because we don't want our track to be muddy. So let's go like that maybe. And then let's maybe take off a little bit of that. Now, as you can tell, the crackles are like alternating in sound, so you'll hear a big pop and then the rest will be kind of quiet. So to take off some of that crunch from those big pops, we can throw in a glue compressor and we can bring the threshold down. Now this sound is really quiet, so I'm going to have to bring my threshold down a lot in order for it to actually do anything. See that? There we go, that's what we want. So now that we generally mixed all of these sounds, let's go on our master and let's throw on an EQ8 and let's just check out all those frequencies after we mix the drums to the instruments. <laughs> All right, so after listening to it, I already can tell that my kick needs a little bit of highs. So I'm gonna add some highs in there, but I'm gonna take out some mids. So as you can see, this is just a sharp dip. I don't want it to be that sharp. I want it to take out a lot of those. So I'm gonna grab my cue, and I'm gonna bring it down, just like that. So now let's solo the kick and let's give it another listen. All right, I feel like it needs just a slight touch of some reverb there we go maybe just on the highs like that bring the gate bring the gate bring the gate bring the bring the dk time down i really struggle with that word those two words yeah all right, and I feel like on the instruments, the side chain is a little bit too powerful, so I'm going to bring the threshold up a little bit. So now let's unsole the kick and let's give everything a listen, see if we can catch anything else. All right, the snare needs a little bit more power, so let's throw in a glue compressor and let's bring the makeup up, so that's going to bring just this general audio up. Let's give another listen. Alright, so the end product sounds pretty good, but one last thing that I like to do to my master is add a glue compressor. So the glue compressor is just going to basically glue all the sounds together and it's going to make it sound like one cohesive track. So we're going to double click on master and we're going to bring down a glue compressor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the threshold down just a little bit. We don't want to drag it down too much, and I'm going to drag the makeup up. So it's just going to make our track generally louder. So if you're struggling with volume on a track, glue compressor is one way to do that. Let's actually bring this down a little bit. So now let's listen to it. All right, that just sounds a lot better. So... <coughs> Alright guys, so if you liked this video, please leave a comment on another video that you want me to do. Leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can get a notification every time I do another video. So the track that I'm mixing right now is Orange House 1, and I played y'all that in the first part of that video. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. But what I'm going to play you at the end of this video is Orange House 2. It's the second general... I don't even know what to call these songs. I'm basically just playing random instruments and throwing random artists in. So check that song out. I'm going to play you a little snippet at the end of this video, but I'm going to leave you a link for the SoundCloud. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Be brave.
Hold your breath and count 